<laughs> well, actually, let's let's do um, let's do talk about telepathy a little bit um, because uh, like I I I believe telepathy is like a skill that we will learn at some point. Yeah, I definitely think so too. I think we're getting there with like with the remote viewing, for example, or they've done studies and people are able to like the twins that are able to telepathically communicate around the world, like they put them on different sides of the world and then they show them something and like the other, like the twins come up with like the same thing. Like that's a sense of telepathy and that's that, I don't know, that could be one way, but I do think that we're getting to that communication. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, uh, yeah, I've started to watch like, uh, you know, a bunch of YouTube, I started to do some exercises on remote viewing or whatever. And it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Cause it's like, uh, you have to, I mean, a lot, a lot of it is like knowing how to read your inner, inner voice head or whatever. Uh -huh. And like knowing what the messages kind of are. Yeah. And, and like not self doubting yourself so much. I think like, that's a big, yeah, um, it's a big one. Uh, yeah, because like your first instinct is oftentimes like yeah the right one. Um, but so like yeah, I definitely have a challenge with that. But I, you know, like when I I, I know it's possible because like I I have had um, been spoken to te te telepathically before, like by the even if it's you know, all in my head, like it still is. Uh, and when I was spoken to by those like light things. Um, like I said, it's interesting because it's not like a linear timeline. It's like, it was almost like, just like you get chunks and blocks of just knowings and information. Um, mm -hmm. So I wonder how we're going to form it, format that in our own brains. And like, do you think it would be a thing where like, um, we have to kind of unlock certain areas of our brain that we don't currently use? Or do you just think it's like a slow realization that's just going to have to come to us? What do you think? I don't know. It could be like firing up the neurons kind of, because there is something happening, you know, in the brain. It's not, it's like, well, what is it? Maybe that hasn't been, hasn't been discovered yet. I, I don't know what well, the other, I guess this is along the same lines, but um, you know, before it was like, oh, we only use 20% of our brain. It's like, well, what does that mean? We only use 20% of our brain. So, and I don't know that I remember hearing the eighties all the time or like the nineties when I was growing up. So since then, I'm sure we use more of our brain now. So what does that mean exactly now? So maybe it's a point I mean, of evolution with tele telepathy. I don't know. Well, like that, that is sort of like the thing about, um, well, like, I don't think I finished my thought earlier when I was saying like how many of my sister were talking about how, you know, I was talking about how geology isn't like a, a perfect science, like at all. It's just like, just cause you, like, this is igneous rock and this is sedimentary rock. And this is you know, like, this, right. that doesn't just cause you're labeling it doesn't mean you really understand what something is. And the same thing my sister said is with the human body. It's like, you know, just cause you go like, this is a cell and this is a membrane. Right. This, 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 you, you know, you can sit there and give hyper you know, complicated names to everything. But just because something has a name doesn't mean you understand like why it exists, how it exists and what its function fully is and how it right. interacts with other things. Obviously, we don't have we we are this like amazing machine yes. that um, doesn't know how it how its own self works, essentially. And it, we're, we're finding out new great things all the time. And that's wonderful and beautiful and awesome. But like we just we just unmap the the DNA genome, like whatever, like within the last, you know, since I've been an adult. And at first they were like, oh, well that's junk DNA. Only this, <laughs> now I don't think they're calling it junk DNA anymore. <laughs> um, it's just like, well, we don't know what any of that stuff does, but uh, we know uh, this one gives you a colored eyes. Right. And this one. Uh, well, yeah, but that you have to go through that. It's like, you, you know. You really do, you have to take the baby step. In order to get to university. Well, that, and that is true, but I, 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 I think a lot of the things that we think impossible right now and like, like telepathy are, they're just like maybe like a, a senior level thing. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're actually gonna figure it out even all the way up to step, up to that step. You mean to uncover to how it's done? Like, like how um, it's done, like how it actually works. And like, I also sort of feel like it'll be like a hundredth monkey thing. Like it'll be yeah, well, uh, like where true. we're going to yeah. start, like, 
like it's almost like a, I feel like it'll be like a slow realization process that slowly starts to happening to where you start more and more having coincidences like okay like I've had a couple of um I was sitting next to this flight attendant um about six months ago who was super difficult to talk to it was like pulling teeth from a chicken every time I tried to like get her to talk to me so like we're like stuck in like you know a captive audience sitting right next to each other for like 20 minutes as the thing's taking off before we can get up and get drinks and I'm like you know, I'm not allowed to use my phone at that time. And I'm just like sitting there like twiddling my fingers going like, so you have any kids? Like how long have you been here? Like, what do you, you know, she's just giving me nothing like now, now, now. And, um, like I heard her voice in my head say something about how, like, um, I don't know if I should get a white dress or if I should do that white pantsuit for Thailand or maybe I should do a white, and I was like, so you're going to Thailand? And she was like, what? And I said, oh, oh, didn't you say that? And she was like, I didn't say nothing. And I was like, oh, okay. She's like, yeah, I'm going to Thailand. I'm going next week. And I was like, well, uh, and what's the white, what's, what, what's the, what's, what's the white thing about? And she was like, witch, what are you talking about? Are you a witch? <laughs> And I was just like, I was like, what? And then she was just like, yeah, I'm going to a, a white party, like where you have to dress in all white or whatever. And, uh, and I was just kind of like, oh, okay. And she was like, how did you know that? Like, what, what did you just do just there? And I didn't know what I just did right there. Cause I just sort of like for a couple, I just was, I wasn't trying to do anything. I just like for, could hear her thoughts for like, just like a 10 second little window. And then I was just like, oh, I, I, no, I, I, no, I must have heard you. I must have seen, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't so know. do you think that you were in, were you like kind of going into, do, do you think you were like at a meditative state um, right I, I could have been because I was bored out of my mind and I was just like, uh You were in a zone kind of. Yeah. I was kind of like, I, I, I didn't have, I, I couldn't, I didn't have anything to fiddle with or anything to do. And I was just like, yeah. Yeah. And then going like, and picked then up. Like sort of, yeah. And that, that, I mean, just two weeks ago, I was with my cousin on a ski trip and, um, uh, she, I, I also, we were getting coffee and she, she, I heard her thoughts. She said something about the girl, like one of her coworkers and about how she used to work for this other company. And I was like, Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I can't remember the girl's name. It was like, some common name like Stacy or something. She, I was like, oh, I didn't know Stacy used to work for like BP. And she was like, yeah, it was just, I was just thinking that like, did, did I tell you that? And I was like, oh yeah, I, I no, I, somebody must have told me that, you know, okay, whatever. And then like we went on, and she went on to talk about it. She didn't like really pick up on it, but I, I did like, I heard, I heard her thoughts like, and I was kind well. of, Hmm. Warning, be careful of your thoughts around Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I have zero control. Like, zero control of anything. And I'm not special. I'm really not special. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like everybody has these weird little um, experiences, and sometimes you just don't chalk it up to anything. You just let it go. Well, I always wonder, like, if you if we were able to study your brain, you know, what would be different inside your brain when that happens compared to somebody else? Like, is it a certain section of your brain? Um, again, is it like neurons like going off for something, or is it like theta waves happening? So there there is something happening, I think, that you're able that you're just like able to pick up on. Maybe you're just getting into that zone, or maybe thoughts are put out there, right? So if thoughts well, are the same. I yeah, I think, thoughts I think are the thoughts same are dimension. Frequency. Like thoughts have, I mean, there's some right. sort of physical right. something. I was just them. reading something about that. Like thoughts in the are in the fourth dimension, which is the same dimension as dreams, and so they exist, right? They have to exist in order to get to like um, to get to something. Like you have to have a thought first before you're able to like create it in the physical world in our third dimension. So if you if you're able to like put a thought out there and you're picking up like a radio transmitter and you're picking up on it like an antenna, then well, that's it, what's happening. You know, it's like, um, we already know that plants have that ability where, right. um, you know, that whole experiment where like you can even just like, I can't remember how they were yeah. measuring the- I They were measuring on the lie detector test. Yeah, they were measuring the leaf and they, they even just thinking, I'm gonna burn just this thinking, leaf. Yes, exactly. The leaf would be like, 
versus, right. you know, uh, yep. You didn't even have to say it, just thinking. You don't that. even have to say it. Yeah, just thinking that. So they're able to telepathically pick up our thoughts, and we don't even really do that very well between humans. But the only thing is, maybe the precursor to it is that we are able to, for people who are considered intuitive or like the empaths, you know, they're able to pick up um, a feeling. And so they pick up maybe like nonverbal communication that, that's really a large part of our communication. So mm -hmm. in some sense, they're picking up like the fields of like an emotional field maybe of other people. I mean, that's not quite the same level as a mental pickup, but they're still, they're still into something. Maybe, maybe they're able to pick up the emotional part of it and you're able to pick up the, um, you know, the words or like the intellectual part of it. Who knows? But people are more sensitive to certain things, like more receptive. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I definitely know I have a little bit of an audio thing going. I mean, like, as even in this podcast alone, I've already said I heard star seeds. Like I heard, you know, like yeah. fairies like, talking to me. I heard like stones rocks. and stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, yeah, I definitely know I have a little bit of a, I mean, I hear, I hear energy all the time. Like I hear, I hear, I hear stuff like, um, yeah. that isn't there. So like, I know I have a little bit of that, but it's, I can't control it. Like I don't, um, I don't, you know, I'm not like clear yeah, audience where I'm like, like I'm gonna go talk to the spirit world all the time. Or, you know, I mean, I, that'd be cool. I would love to develop that. That'd be great. But, um, I'm just saying like, I think, um, I don't like, and like I said, I don't think I'm special. I just literally think that there, there is some sort of physical wave that some like, you know, well, every once in a while I get a little detection of it real quick. And I think, yeah. I think a lot of people, um, have like weird little coincidences they have to all the time and then they just don't accredit it to anything they just like walk over it and set, and just don't give it any mind well i i that's probably true like when you know someone when someone is about to call and you know that who's who it is or mm -hmm. when like you start singing the song before it comes up on the radio like for me when that happens to me i just feel like i'm able to tune in to the actual radio wave and i'm able to get it not that it was maybe it was telepathic but it was like the wave that i was receiving and then i got the song or it doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. Yeah. Um, and then like Pedro and I, my husband, like I, we, not always, but like we can communicate telepathically sometimes. Well, and, you, and with your son, I remember you saying you've had some like, like card tricks or like where you guys have done some exercises where you've gotten pretty good at it, right? Yes. Yeah. We haven't done that in a while. That's, that's great. I'm glad you reminded me. We should do that again. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have that that connection with him. I think you just have that connection with loved ones more because you've probably spent time with them. But like, yeah, I think it's, it happens, but you're right. People probably aren't even aware of it, but I don't think I've ever had where I've actually with somebody I don't know very well, like the girl sitting next to you or the woman sitting next to you on the airplane, you know, like the other flight attendant that you get, you, you didn't know her and you got like the exact thing that she was thinking in that exact moment. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it was, it, I mean, I, I don't feel like it, that one was just kind of like, I felt like I just walked in on any, somebody in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like, Oh, oops. I just, I, I don't think I was, I didn't have permission to get into her brain. I feel like I just, I just literally heard her thoughts for 10 seconds and then, it was like, oh, walked in and out of the bathroom and shut the door. Oops, sorry about that. You know, like I felt like yeah. it wasn't locked for a second. It reminds me of that um, that alien from Was Roswell, like the transcript of the alien that supposedly they captured, and there was like this huge transcript about. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. alien lady who, or you right, know. exactly. That was yeah. Well, yeah. Well, but but they like the alien knew the intentions maybe that was more of a feeling but knew the intentions of like the other people and only trusted the woman who did the translating and like selectively um, selectively picked her but also like already knew the intentions even though the other people were they were they said that they were going to do something else but it was complete lie and they they had actually planned on like harming the alien or doing something else and so the alien never trusted the others because I think he was able to pick or the alien he or she was able, whatever it wasn't even, it was an it, it was a being was able to pick up the, um, thoughts. yeah, telepathy. Yeah, exactly. The thoughts. And the woman was too, the, the woman who was like transcribing all of everything, she was able to telepathically communicate with the being. 
Right. And without saying it verbally out, out, out loud too. Yeah. Yeah. And she got, well, I mean, that's a whole other story. That could be a completely fictitious story. Although I doubt that it is, honestly, I like, I, I think it's pretty, I thought that was, who knows? Yeah. I, I don't know. At the very least cool. Maybe not a hundred percent accurate, but anyway, it was yeah. pretty interesting. Food for thought. Definitely good food for thought. I'll put a link to like what that thing is we were talking about. It was. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to, it's a good one. It's a long listen, but it's worth it. Um, what else? Yeah, I think tele- the te- thing about telepathy that always gets me freaked out, and I know this is going to the dark side stuff of it again, but I feel like it's the mind control aspect of it. Yes. I, yes. yes. <laughs> because I, I'm like, oh my gosh, like what, at what point are we actually free thinking our thoughts? When I think about it so much, I can get, it can get really intense for me. Yeah. Then I'm like, I actually, even my head. It's, it's so funny you say that because last night I was thinking this whole thing where I'm like, Ugh, if they can like, like, cause you know, you hear about like, there's rumors of these technologies that can literally like specifically sound wave, like give you an individual thought or like make Ugh. like, like all this MK ultra stuff where they like can make like yes. people just like, like, I don't know, give like, like it's, oh, it's basically like demonic possession essentially where like they like can control the thoughts of one being or like specifically put voices into their heads and stuff and then you wonder like what is schizophrenia and you know like like what is it really like is it I mean could there be like these weird experiments that are being done on people and then like then then you kind of like wonder well how can you even trust these thoughts I don't know I always think that that's when I start freaking out I'm like all right I don't want to think too deeply into that because then I'll be like how do I know that these thoughts are even mine yeah Yeah. (laughs) I could go off the deep end there so I try not to but yeah but how do you know I I mean I I I guess I guess uh, uh I guess that's where you can't use your head and you have to use your other you know you have to use like the heart as the the feeling emotion of like you know what, like that's sometimes like what, like I was saying, like, uh, um, I don't know. I remember talking to you or telling you that I was having like really strong emotion this last lunar eclipse or whatever. Yeah. It was like the day before the eclipse, I was just like really like crying for no reason. And it wasn't hormonal or anything. It was, I should have been fine. Um, and I was like kind of thinking like every once in a while I'd be like, this doesn't even feel like mine. Like these emotions like aren't necessarily like right. mine. Like I'm yep. it's almost like I'm empathically picking up on either exactly. the planet, like herself as a being, or like somebody's field around. I don't know what's going on, but like I finally was just as soon as like the actual lunar eclipse was going on and I went outside and I looked at it and I was like, Oh, this is so pretty, it's cool. And I felt light again and I felt fine and I felt myself and I felt normal. But the day leading up to right before that eclipse, I, I did feel like this weird, like, oh, this, but that's the thing. Sometimes I think you need to trust your feelings on what, what, what you know, is this my, is this my emotion? Is this me? Right. Exactly. Like, do I have a reason to be upset about this right now? Like, am I overreacting or not? Am, am I, if I am, that's cool. But like, let's sit with that. But why? And is it mine? Yeah, I asked that exactly. a lot. And no, who am good. I? Right. You know, yeah, I always ask that, like, you know, like, who am I? Like, who, who is viewing through my eyes? Like, yes. You know, I like to like go back to that all the time. Like, who's answering it when I say, who am I? Right. Ooh. Like, that's, that's pretty I, crazy. Yeah, I play with that one a lot because, because, because when you, if you say like, oh, I'm Nikki or I am like, or, you know, I just am I, like, I don't know what the right answer to the question, who I am, who am I? I don't know what the right, what answer to that is. Well, I think that part of the soul journey is continuing to discover that, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's complicated. Who knows? But there's, yeah, there's, you could always ask who, who am I and, and never, it's, so it's going to change from yesterday to today. And then also the who am I question comes to like, I could think who I am, but it's not fully who I am because other people visu- like see me differently than I see myself. So then there's an, an aspect of, you know, you're always subjective to who you think you are, even if you're able to answer that question. But, yeah. you know, because because you're not, you're not really, there could be blind spots or like other, you're just not fully aware of like other parts of yourself. 
Yeah, actually, that's what, that's the thing that kind of scares me the most about being a human in general is that like basically anybody you look at, you can find flaws in if you if you sit and examine them long enough, and then you kind of go like, well, uh, obviously I have flaws because everybody else has flaws. So like, if I'm blindsided to that, why am I blindsided to that? And like, how self aware am I really? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's always a question of self awareness, and also the who. Well, any question like a who am I question, I feel like gets so lost in words. And that's where I think telepathy is so much more, Mm -hmm. so much more evolved because our languages are so limited to verbal language, let's say, or even a written language, whatever, any kind of language. Oh yeah. Yeah. So then what is telepathy? That that is true. That is one of those things where you you kind of like your, your, your thoughts, the the expansion of your thoughts are limited to the, the vocabulary of your language. You know, like well, I think that thoughts are even more they're they're even bigger than that because like there are so many thoughts I have or a drawing I want to do, let's say, and I could visualize it, but I can't actually make it happen. So like my thoughts are more sophisticated in some ways than what I'm able to make happen in the third dimension, either through my communication and speaking or like whatever, writing language or through writing, drawing, like it's just my yeah. Your brain. Yeah. Your thoughts is that your thoughts are bigger. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But also like, I mean, I, I mainly think in English and yeah. um, like when I'm thinking about like the cosmos or like, you know, when it gets down to the root of everything is that like, like it doesn't matter if there's good or evil, if there's heaven or hell or if there, none of that ultimately what like there's, there's just like this energy, this one energy, that's everything. Right. And then, um, like the to- whole duality story, what, like when, whenever that gets broken down and is back unified into everything and you're kind of like, like really, really sitting with that and, and trying to come up with a timeline and trying to understand that time isn't real and time doesn't exist is it's, it's really almost an, an fa- like I can say it, but it like to actually like visualize like how that works or to like see that as a story that actually unfolds is um it's it's very hard I can't yeah well because we think of we think of time as very linear and we see it from a an earth perspective we we look at time from an earthling perspective but and from a human perspective and it doesn't it's not really like that so you can only, so we want things to happen in a certain order and to evolve that way, but it's not, it's probably not like that. It could be overlapping, it could be going back and it's constantly changing because if there's no past, present or future, you can actually like change your past because it's all existing at the same time. So it's, it's like, it's really beyond our capability of, of, of like fully grasping it in human form. Mm -hmm. that's one of the things I was thinking of like when we were talking about the science experiments because um like so we have we we can say that like uh, certain certain formulas work here on earth but they're we can't hold them true they're not absolute you know so things change or um so if we have right, for instance, gravity, like one, of the, one of the ones they always say is like, you know, like the fastest you can travel is the speed of light. I'm I was going like, to say, that's exactly that, what I was going to say. That one always is kind of like, why would you put a limit on anything? Right. And now they're finding that that's not even true. So that's exactly, that was the one I was totally thinking of. But even gravity, let's say, so that works. Gravity works within our, within our earth. Within, yeah. yeah. But, but even then it doesn't work the same on the moon or Mars or, I mean, it changes. Well, that's the, right. You know, exactly. Distance from the sun. Yeah. So we only look at things like, even if we could still see when we're looking out at the, when we look at the stars, we're looking them, looking at them from earth. So if we were out there looking at other stars, they would be different distances and they would have visually be different, even if we were in our bodies. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's, but that, that, that's, that's what always makes me, um, you know, kind of go like, like then I, then I start getting into scales and sizes and things where you're kind of going like, what if like germs are freaking from the, the center alpha centauri or something. And like, they're all these, just, they come in every day and all like, like there could, like, we literally could be on like a, an elephant saddle or something, you know, like we could be, and like, we're, we're inside of a cell that's inside of yes. this thing that's, you know, like, and that's what space is to us. Or, right. you know, 
we could be a cell that's within a cell, like an infinite, right. small, infinitely large. I don't know. Like the scales of things just can kind of really play with my mind or yeah, yeah like you could have like tiny little ants could be aliens and we oh, don't yeah. know. Yes. I always, I always think that like, if you could, if you go down and down and down and you keep looking at something under a microscope and going smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's like, whoa, that's actually the same thing that's happening. Like at the macro level. Macro level yeah. So it's like, oh, it's just so mind boggling. There's it's never, like, always it's something almost as if it can't get big enough and it's almost like it can't get small enough. Like exactly. we just always invent something to see some it to see even smaller like you know yes. what's within the atom what's within the cork what's within the string right. what's within exactly you know, like and right. i don't know like we got this telescope but what happens when we get more glass that's even bigger that's even more right. microscopic like, right um you know like that's the whole infinity paradox you know like exactly um, yeah that one that one blows my mind i remember being like just awed by it when I was a kid. And it was so weird. I had this experience when I was a kid. I don't know how old I was, probably like 10, maybe not like super young. And I was falling asleep and I was in that state of between sleeping and awake. And I started thinking about infinity. And then I just, I, I had started to like leave my body and just started to go out, out, out into space. And I just kept going further and further and further. And I was like, where wait infinity infinity oh my infinity and then all, and then it, all of a sudden i started to feel myself so far out into space that i freaked out and that brought me back down into my bed and i was just like what oh my god infinity That's like cool. i can't even grasp that at all but yeah that was, i don't know <laughs> yeah i remember having like i remember i was like probably i don't know like elementary school some some age and i remember having this like okay who created God? Yes, exactly. Well, like, nobody could have created God because like then somebody would have had to have created him who or her or it or who exactly. would have had to have created that. Which I, And then so I was like, I was like, okay, so then that, that's infinity. Infinity is God because there's nothing that could have created God because then that would be God. And then if something created that, then that would have been God and you know, so on and so right, forth. Exactly. And then, so I'm like, okay, so then, yeah. So like, like a constant really does have to be infinity because like because we exist in general because there is existence means that there has to have been existence right so you know like i do think for me i thought okay well infinity just the concept of infinity is god but then i like what that. bothered me was okay what has a beginning has to have an end and or that's what they say. I don't know, you know, whoever they is, but like, that's a saying. And then, so you're kind of going like, well, okay. If I have a beginning, if I was born this state and I remember this thing, then I have to have an end and that's fine, whatever. But then like how, but I don't even know what non-existent felt like. I had, yeah. it, it, I like, it, it always bothers me that, that I don't yeah. even remember when the memory started. I don't even remember when like the dark, I don't remember when the darkness became light. So like, it's almost like we don't, I don't have a true beginning because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so like your past becomes so, pl so cloudy to where it's like, if this is your lifespan, wherever you are within it, you'll, you, you kind of go within it like this. So right. Exactly. Exactly. And the memories get further and farther to the past. And blurrier and blurrier as they go. Yes, exactly. And that, um, that almost makes me in a way it, it there's part of that can, that can be comforting because you're kind of going like, well, you know, especially because of dreamland where I, I, I do resonate with some things that I, I almost feel are more memory than, than dream in terms mm -hmm. of like other things that I, I, I basically chalk up to probably being past lives because they feel like the way a memory feels to me. But even when you remember a, a memory, you don't even associate yourself there anymore. It's almost like the story you tell yourself, which, which is bizarre. yes. So that, that that's kind of like the whole be here now thing and how you're, yeah, that's you think, all you've got. <laughs> that's all you got. Like, Hey, hey own that. Yeah. Be happy with that. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting that many people have experienced like that flash of their entire lives before their eyes, if they've had like a near death experience and been able to come back and be like, I saw my whole life link flash before my eyes. Mm -hmm. So you can 
I don't know if you remember every single detail in just like a moment. So then that kind of like plays with our idea of a time because how are you able to see everything in your entire life in like a flash, you know? And then, um, yeah, that always got me because I'm just like, all right, well then maybe you're able to like see every single detail of your entire life or do you just see highlights, the ones that stayed with your memory and you would have kind of remembered on planet earth anyway while you were living your life? Well, I mean, the closest, I mean, like I, you know, when I did my massive mushroom trip, I um, took way too many and I didn't know what I was doing. And I, um, I had what, like, I guess is defined as an ego death. And um, after the fairies got done singing to me, um, I went to the, I went into this, this tent and I, um, I laid down and I, I started feeling horrible because it was like everything started fractaling I don't know if that even is able to explain it but every, like just geometric shapes just all started like fractaling and I was like having a hard time like associating my breath like every every breath I took felt like um it was a, like a, a conscious decision to make to take yes, the breath yes. and and then I, I just finally had to just like release that and as soon as I released that like um I left my body and I could see myself in the tent laying down there. And then like, I could see the tent then I could see the forest. Then I saw the planet. Then like I was past the moon and then I got like, I don't know. It was the moon started like getting smaller to where things started to digitize as if it were like something the like matrix. A, well, yeah, it's kind of like the matrix, but it, it did. It almost like became pixelated and it, and it, and it digitized to where like for a second I was in just blackness, nothing. And then I felt my breath, my actual, my, my, my body must have breathed. And, and then like when I went like that, I jumped up into this, um, this layer of something that we don't have words to describe. So like, I can't tell you like a, what a visualization of it would have looked like. And like, I, I like to describe it as, um, it wasn't, it, I went back to source is what I, like I say now, because it wasn't, um, a person. So like, it wasn't a God. And I feel like the word God is a personified something. I feel like that's a person and that it wasn't that. And I, and I don't feel like it was like heaven or something because it, it wasn't a physical place. It didn't feel like a physical place. It was like electricity. And it was just like, I, I don't know. I, I was just in the, I was this electricity. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, I wasn't Nikki. I wasn't yeah. this girl. I wasn't 35. I, I wasn't, no, I was like, I was this electricity and I didn't identify at all with anything. I didn't even remember ever being Nikki. And like, um, it was both the most wonderful thing and the worst thing at the same time. It was like, like there, it, it, I remember there was a lot of weird fractals and I, and I, I was everywhere at all times. Like I was, it, it was in, it, and what's, I know this sounds, it sounds trippy, like, cause it was a drug trip or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, I remember, um, like there, there was this like, arc like this circle bow of the, all these different colors of light that like pull, like grabbed me and pulled me back into like this circle like will and like they pulled me down they said you're not no we're not you don't need you we're not ready to go back you're not ready to go back and I was just like and then like I, I sort of like remembered like and I have was in this in-between limbo zone where I was like talking with everything I have been and everything that I will be so everything that um shares the particular um electricity that ignites my cells like everything that like this electricity that ignites my cells like call it my soul um it's 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 a it's a it's a shared thread of other other, of other timelines and they weren't giving me permission to stay there you know and, and they were like trying to convince me to 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 come back and i was just like why it's all fake you know i like and i i wanted to go back up into this energy to be this energy again and, um, on my in breaths and my out breaths, I sat and I fought with myself the entire time, like to, to whether or not I would go or I would come. And one thing I took away from this experience and really remembered was when I was back with this electricity and this energy, I remember thinking, or, or not even thinking, I remember feeling that I, I've always been, and I always will be like meaning like as God or as, as source, 
like it's, it's always been, and it always will be. And, but we don't even source doesn't know why it just always has, but it doesn't know why even it exists. That's mm-hmm. sort of how I felt. And I felt like because of that, it fragmented itself into infinite amount of possibilities. And we're all part of it trying to figure its own self out. So mm-hmm. we're all bringing a, a, a different perspective to ourselves yeah to to, fig, to to figure out the why of why this is i don't know if that's true that's just right. what i felt when i was there yeah and um it was the most amazing experience because i really have improved in the last year and a half in terms of like um like I, you know don't judge people for like if they wanted to like be born and go hunt alligators in the swamp and like sit back and enjoy a couple bud lights and be like, yeah, buddy, you know, like that's like, that was like, that's their prerogative. And like, that's like their journey. And that's part of it. Like, that's like, I think like, we're not all on this like uppity up, like, yay, we're gonna, we're just ascending the levels of, I mean, I think, yeah. Everything. Everybody's like, where, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's there, I mean, like yeah. I even had this memory of being a rock like like i i feel like there's essence to the material of to anything that's materialized like has an essence and well, sure. I, you know and like i mean like animals rocks like uh, like like light itself particle like you're just frozen light that's all you are right now you're frozen energy at this particular time but like time just was, it was weird. That's the only time I've ever experienced that I remember, um, like not having linear time. And, uh, that's pretty cool experience. Yeah. It was amazing. It was like the most amazing experience of my life. Um, and I actually felt like I was there longer than I've been alive. Like it felt like I was there thousands and thousands of years. Wow. Took me probably like a month to reintegrate. (laughs) Well, I would imagine, oh my gosh, yeah, that's crazy. It's just, I mean, there's like no words really, except that like I was thinking about the ego death because you didn't care. Like if your body was physically trying to breathe, you know, so you could have like stayed or gone, like you, your, your, your ego, let's say it was the body would have left, you know, like you didn't care. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like you were worried, like, I got to go back. I got things to do here on earth. You know what I mean? Like you were just like, okay with whatever. And you were just living the experience, not really worried or feeling like you were totally out of your body. Yeah. In fact, like the, the way that my selves were able to get me to go back into my body was, um, cause I kept on telling them that none of this was real. This isn't real. None of this is real. None of this is real. And none of this being earth stuff or the stuff that you were talking to them about, like, just like this manifestation, like this particular incarnation, I basically chalked it up to this as a dream kind of in like in a way. And I was just kind of like, why do I don't need to go back to being Nikki? Like, that's not even real. Like, you know, and they were like, well, and like something said, well, is your mom real? And I was like, well, yes, of course my mom's real. You know, it's like, do you want cheesy boofs? So, yes, I want cheesy boofs. It was just like, oh, I mean, like, I, 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 I was like, so the candy, like, the small the candy like, back. And they're like, okay, here, here, here. Is your mom real? And I was like, and I love my mom. And um, uh, and I was like, well, yes, of course she's real. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, well, and then um, and I was kind of like, but I still don't know if I care about being in this facade or not, you know. And then yeah. um, but that like it took me out of my selfishness and into that for a second, and then it um it was like, uh, that that's, they, this is when my hearing really like hasn't turned off. Like I had a little bit of this before, but this is when it like really spiked in terms of the hearing electricity is, um, they said, okay, well, we'll, we'll give you a gift to go back. And they said, we're going to allow you to hear what your energy sounds like. And I, and I remember saying to them, like, like, okay, that's kind of like a lame superpower basically, or kind of going like, well, what good is that going to do? Or like, how will I know like that, it, what mine sounds like? And they showed me what my electricity sounds like versus what my mother's sounded like. And so I got to hear what two different, and it's like voices. It's like, you know, everybody's voice in the planet is slightly different. 
and so is your the electricity you have a little different sound than every single person on the planet and um like when when uh uh when i uh, i said well what can i do with this and they said well you'll be able to tell when so when something is in your field when it's not you in your field and i was like oh okay cool and then so like that was cool so i still have that hmm. like, year and a half later I still hear I can so like if I'm like like before I go to bed and stuff I just it's kind of annoying because I can't really turn it off so like I just basically hear like this buzzing sound that I make wow so is it it just sounds like electricity yeah like you know like the sound that a refrigerator makes when it's like like running like, yeah. like uh -huh. or um yeah like a little static sounds like a little rice krispies like yeah and then like i was like ah oh, maybe i just got tinnitus but it's not i mean like maybe it is tinnitus i don't know but also it's like one of those things where um it um uh, it changes based on like like if i'm sick or if i'm like super healthy or, like my mood can like kind of like make it stronger louder plumper and then and when i'm out like if i'm in an airplane with 150 people it's so it's so chaotic that it just, it goes away. It turns off. Like I don't hear anything. I just like, I'm, I'm normal. Like I was it, like, I really can start hearing things when it gets, um, like five or less people in a room. Mm, I see. And I can hear other people too. Only if it's like, like a little less chaotic though. I always hear, I always hear a, uh, I didn't think of it like that, but I always hear a, um, like a hum or a vibration. And I, I kind of am always like, is it tinnitus or what is it exactly? And it changes also, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to see if it's, if it's you like. You should research that because I mean, from what I've understood is that tinnitus is, you know, it's like a particular, um, I, I mean, it's like the death of some sort of something in your ear to where like you hear this constant ringing all the time yes. and it never lets up right. and it never changes. And, um, Oh, it doesn't change. Okay. Yeah. But like, I uh, like sometimes it'll alternate ears for me and then sometimes oh. both ears will be on. And, um, well, sometimes I'll hear like a pitch in my ear and I'll it'd be like, you know, as if you were getting a hearing exam and you could hear a pitch and then it gets lower only in one ear. Well, and, I mean, and, that's, that's what a lot of, um, a lot of spiritual community people, cause like I look up a lot of stuff about the ears since I have this ear thing and a lot of like the ringing of the ears thing is a big, like, um, it's like a big psychic awakening. It's like a big, um, yeah. you know, something's trying to talk to you or something's trying right. to give you a message or I like, try to be aware of that, but yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm always like, what's the message? Wait, should I, what should I, how should I be tuning in? Like what's yeah. going on? I, I'm the same. I'm kind of like, well, gotta be a little clearer than that. Cause I have no <laughs> idea what that means. Or if I just have tinnitus. So thank right. you. And also like, I hear vibration all the time and I think like the, the electricity, but I always think like we live in a, an electronic world, yeah. you know, there's, there's like the, the, the modem to the internet's constantly on. I mean, it's not in my bedroom, but it's, it's like in the house range and there's electricity wires all over the place. I don't know what my neighbors are doing. There's like, you know, lights, street lights on, like there's just a constant barrage of, of, electricity happening so i think you can pick that up too like that's what i think some of that is for me because have you i, I don't even remember to the to the last time i've ever been into a completely silent place like zero zero like nothing it's almost impossible to get yeah you're right and uh uh that's why sometimes i wonder like like when you do get into some place that's really quiet or that's why like even even in the woods it's just like birds chirping and everything like hear crickets and i mean it's it like silence is um uh, like i don't know like that's kind of almost as scary as pitch blackness yes exactly right well at the beginning there was the word you know what i mean like the like i'm not a big bible person but i do like some of the some of it there's obviously well for me there's some truth there's some right. truth to it I'm, i don't like oh yeah i mean button. like i think there's nuggets but, of like, truth in lots of things but yeah exactly there's nuggets of truth that's why it's none of it's clear and the great mystery the great mystery like some if you could say the great spirit is like that runs through everything but the great mystery is what we're talking about things that we're just never gonna be able to explain like the beginning of time like 
who came first? Like what happened? Who, who invented this? What, 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 what exactly is this? And then the, and then like God wanted to experience itself. And so that's where we all came about. We're constantly pretty much creating our experiences and maybe we don't know why, but like, that's the great mystery. And it's constantly changing too, because anything that we create is not ever going to be the same as it was. So it's, it's, I don't know. It's just like, uh, it's so. (laughs) Well, and it's like, even like, I've always thought the big bang was the dumbest theory ever because it's like, okay, well then what created the molecules that were swimming around that collide, that started the big bang? Like, like, you know, some, you can't create something from nothing. Um, and then, uh, or at least scientifically you, you pretty much can't. So, you know, and then they, they always say like the universe is like expanding, expanding to where eventually everything will just go to, the far forever. end forever, forever and then just die off and burn out and everything will just eventually like well then they you know, say that it's coming like back that. well but th- they don't know that's what it really boils down to is like you can't <laughs> base anything off the measurements of 50 years of, yeah. of observing with six telescopes that's essentially what we're doing here you know going like yeah well, I, I mean i think that the big bang i i mean is there there's evidence of it but i just think that like it's not the it's not the end all it's just there's more I to mean, it it could literally be like the figure eight where it's like you go to a certain point and then you get exactly. back to where like you go back and and then you right come and then that right in the center right in the center whereas everything is one again you know yep and it's just that's, be like these giant cycles of like doom to doom and on right. infinity you go on and on and on and on and on, and right. on or it could be more like you know a toroidal filled look or i don't know what yeah. the geometry of it's going to look like or whatever i don't know how much it matters but I mean, obviously we're never going to figure everything out, but I, no. I do think that, um, I like thinking about this stuff and I think it's important to think about this stuff because I think, um, at least like sharing thoughts like this, you get a tiny, even if it's just, you got one sentence that you hadn't thought about before, or I, you know, exactly. or I hadn't thought about that before or whatever. I just feel like it helps us build on the possibilities of what this all is yeah and that's, and you know, I mean, yeah and like we will like I, I, i'm gonna send you a book like when i say like, i'm gonna send you the holographic field theory universe by michael talbot which is an amazing book it's like my favorite book i've ever read um and we'll discuss that at some point because it's like it kind of all ties into this which is amazing you would love it Oh, I'm, well, I know a little, little bit about, but there's no way I could discuss that right now. Send the book for sure. But um, yeah. yeah, the hologra- the holographic universe. And also the, ho- I started thinking more about holograms when I was reading that crop circle book, because there's some, there's some connection there as well. And I remember I was reading the book and thinking about this holographic universe in very simplistic way, you know, just just barely dabbling and I never really extended. But at that same time, I went into the MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They, they had a museum that had holograms everywhere. And I just was like, it was like an art slash science museum of holograms. And it was, I don't know, it just blew me away. I was just like, this just makes sense. Like there was a picture of like the entire universe in this little thing. You know, it was just like a little pic. It was just like a little picture that was a hologram, and I was like, "That's the freaking universe!" You know, like it's just incredible. Who well, knows? and like the the th- the idea behind an actual hologram is that like like you can take a, a a piece of it and it has the entirety of exactly. the whole and the like little piece. Right. And then you know, like I guess like a thing that they've proven now is you know the age old question of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, did it make a sound? And the answer is actually no, because um, the thing is, is that the, like the viewer or the perception, like something has like, like with Schroeder's cat or whatever, it's like, or Scribner's cat or whatever. Anyway, I think it's Schroeder's cat. I don't know. Whatever. Sorry. I don't know. Um, like, is this cat, like they put a cat in a box and it's like, if it's, it's dead or alive, I always thought it's the dumbest experience, but uh, experiment, but anyway, basically with a, a, a particle of light, it's, it's either a wave or a point based on, um, based on if it, like, if it's viewed or not, like, you know, like things like yes. our, our perception, if like the something is perceiving changes. it or not, yes. changes the reality of, of like particles. Okay. And so, right. I mean, and that's like, they can say like they, that you can account all of these paranormal experiences and 
all of these tele telepathic things and all this stuff because it's like perhaps I mean I can hear that this chick is going to Thailand because it's it, it you know it's it's this hologram it's it is this thing that you know uh and some people are breaking into the actual um uh, the actual piece uh, like they're they're a piece of the whole and they can like view the whole at one point they can view the hologram and then there's um you know there's people who um kind of oh, what is his name saw baba i'll put a link to or, him anyway he he was this indian um dude who, he died like in 2013 i think but he could manifest anything out of his hands at all time like so they had millions and millions of people that was he would just like go this and he would like circle his hand around and like boom give you a gold chain and they have you just would, like sit here and like have ash just falling out of his hands and honey and oils and like just all this stuff and they have him on video after video i had never heard of him in my entire life until i read this book and then like you're gonna see millions of videos of this dude just doing that and i mean yeah sure like you can always say it's like video hoaxes or he's a charlatan or whatnot but like it's like david blaine he babbles my head when he I, used to do card tricks whatever he used to right. do some crazy yeah like a lot of people say like he's he's he, i mean yeah but i mean like they don't even say that this this solid baba they don't even necessarily say he was a self-realized being they just say that i mean like he just was able to do that the hologram <laughs> yeah like he started doing it when he was like 13 and just would be like oh okay like oh you want this here oh you want oh you want some money, did, some money. Did, he, did he give workshops and how people do that <laughs> no never taught anybody how to do it because he didn't he didn't know how to teach how to do it yeah he could just hmm. do it wow and like, yeah, there's, well, it's things. like the experiments that like, you know, you, the experiments are done, but they never, like, we never counter in that, that like the, the obs observing the experiment changes the outcome of the experiment. So right. that, that part, that part is kind of conveniently overlooked in sci in most scientific experiments or, or the placebo effect or the nocebo effect, like all these things, like, like they're, it's like, well, that doesn't kind of fit like our usual formula of how we can do experiments, but it still exists. It changes the observed, the observed changes because there's, because they're being observed. Yeah. I mean, and like, I think, um, I, I mean, the placebo effect is, is definitely one of those things where like, if you, I mean, the, like most drugs are basically just as effective as the <laughs> placebo. I mean, it's, it's like, and, and when you look at a lot of the studies, they'll be like, oh, well, it's 30%. It's like three, 3% 3 more effective than the placebo. Right. Doing right. good, guys. That doesn't seem yeah. like a good percentage. I'll stick with the placebo. I mean, I, I remember there's even like a thing where um, Americans uh, take aspirin for headaches or something and like the UK or Europeans like don't like I mean and, and it's and it's so like I guess we believe it's effective for our headaches so it actually works for us whereas they don't believe it's effective for their headaches so like they don't have as much as, as much of it sold there and so they don't really take it and so it like doesn't they don't find it as effective for Europeans and like, you're just kind of going like no. what that's that's bizarre yeah yeah it's totally bizarre yeah, yeah. I guess it's the way you think about it. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. We got some stuff. We got some material here. We do. So. 